This is Nina Curley of Wamda Media. I'm here at the Global Entrepreneurship Summit with Sassan Hartib Shahidi, the co-founder of German Imaging Technologies, a Dubai-based printer cartridge manufacturing company. Sassan, how are you? Very good. Good to be here. Thank you for having me. Excellent. So you were just ranked in the Arabia 500 regional rankings. You were ranked, I think you told me, number 11 for the UAE? Well, in the Arabia 500, we are the 15th in the UAE, and in the Dubai SME 100, we were ranked 11th and the 6th fastest growing in the Dubai SME 100 ranking. Mabruk. Thank you very much. So, you started in 1999. Um, back then in Dubai, what was the gap in the market that you saw that made you want to create a printer cartridge manufacturing company? Well, I was actually a practicing corporate attorney in Frankfurt and I had a nice life sitting on the 19th floor of a nice tower next to Deutsche Bank and uh, somehow things changed in my life and I ended up in Dubai. But I didn't see necessarily a gap in Dubai. Uh, the initial plan uh, for setting up a facility in Dubai of larger scale was uh, to produce outsourced for a German manufacturer. We had at that time an agreement with uh, the largest German uh, manufacturer of toner cartridges in the aftermarket uh, to produce for them. So we set up shop in Dubai. It took us about six months uh, to set up the factory level and hire about 40 staff. By the time we had that done that, we invested more than a million dollars in our venture. And then the typical thing happens that happens to an entrepreneur. A single customer is set up in the country and that customer goes into bankruptcy procedures. So essentially, we invested over a million dollars and, and all of a sudden we had no customer. And we had a monthly cash outflow of $100,000 at that time. And uh, we were literally bankrupt and had no customers. Yet here, 13 years later, we're still here. Yeah, 13. Yeah, 13 years later. But so, okay, but if you go bankrupt in the UAE, that's a serious problem. How did you recover from that? Well, uh, our, our, our customer, our core customer in Germany went into bankruptcy procedures after having uh, set up everything. We were physically, practically bankrupt. So there were two options. Option number one, pack your suitcases and run. Option number two, stay in and work hard and uh, get out of uh, the situation that you were in. Our auditors, I remember even three, four years into our business, uh, would say, this is a miracle. We don't understand how you still operate your business. In terms of your financials, you're dead, more than dead. But uh, I think perseverance, belief in the market uh, made us survive. And we shifted our business model. So a lot of people at universities and elsewhere try to study us and say, what kind of creep, uh, creed of people are entrepreneurs? What makes them different? So one of the big buzzwords today is adaptability, and I think that's one of the most important words for an entrepreneur. We started with a model, we invested, we lost our money, that model failed. We needed to be adaptable. So instantly we went to exhibitions in Germany and tried to submit the largest IT exhibition in the world and tried to find another partner so we could outsource our product. And then we realized that the environment in Europe was very competitive at that time, in the year 2000. And <clears throat> that we really didn't have a competitive edge doing that. So the idea was, all right, now we are in Dubai. And the business is absolutely new. The business, the environmental business of remanufacturing toner cartridges did not exist here in the Middle East. In fact, I recall when we tried to register our company, the word toner cartridge did not exist in, in, in the Chamber of Commerce and as a classification in the, in the DED. It took us about seven years up to 2006 to get actually a proper license describing what we do. And uh, it, it was a challenge. The mentality was not there, the understanding was not there, and the Arabic word was not existing. So, okay, so you went from you know an outsourcing model to completely switching around and seeing that you were in a wide open market. Um, how did you then target your customers? How did you then work on either educating the market or finding the few that would understand what you were doing? Well, step one, what probably most do, we try to build up a reseller channel. So we started producing the product, of course, packaging it, making it attractive, because previously we did, didn't focus on having a brand. So now we had to create a brand. That was a new experience. Uh, of course, then we took the cartridge uh, under our arms and walked down, up and down the computer street and uh, tried to find all the resellers and, and, and uh, tap into the reselling market. We quickly realized that in our market segment, the market was extremely fragmented. And 
also driven by counterfeit products and grain import products and it is a very challenging market to place a new aftermarket environmentally friendly product. The value proposition is not really there for the reseller. So we started building our own direct sales, B2B. So adaptability again. So we went from outsource model to uh, the brand to our own brand and then eventually we ended up with a B2B sales model. Today we employ 22 salespeople in the two Emirates, Dubai and Abu Dhabi. And so you're now one of the fastest growing SMEs in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Um, what has changed between then and now in the ecosystem? And do you, how, where do you see yourself in five years? Will you continue to grow at this pace? I think we will grow much faster. A lot of things have changed. And I think the bigger you become, the easier it is to grow. Because growth is all about the quality of the people that you have. And when you get to a certain level that you can afford uh, better, more skilled, more experienced people in your organization, then you can grow much faster and easier. Um, we were, we were ranked sixth fastest growing last year in the Dubai SME 100, uh, very proud of it. 100% during the recession over three years growth. And that in a industrial product, not in a service product or a website or a very easily multiple uh, product that can multiply itself. Um, we look very brightly into our future. Uh, we opened in this year Abu Dhabi, a sales office which hit the break even in the fifth months of operation and was profitable in the six months of its operation. We opened a corporate sales office in Dubai, so we have now three locations in the UAE. And definitely the next step is going to be the region, so Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar, these are the options. The biggest challenge on that path is really not much other than growth capital. The access probably to growth capital is very difficult. And in a Series A uh, placement, say one, two, three, four million dollars. Uh, that arena is, is very thinly uh, uh, positioned here in this region and it's hardly any capital available other than very expensive bank lending. Um, that's probably the single biggest challenge. Else I would say the only challenge is us, ourselves. So the better we operate as people, as a team in our company, we have now 70 staff members, the better we will uh, tackle the market. And do you have any advice for an entrepreneur starting up today in Dubai doing something that you know, has an environmental slant to it? Um, you know, if you want to achieve a goal, you first of all should go out and do it. You should be ready that entrepreneurship is about challenges and solving challenges. So you should love those challenges and you should never get frustrated at those challenges hitting you. So the hardest of the hardest challenges could be hitting you. Entrepreneurship is not a smooth sailing. So you definitely need to be adaptable. In terms of, for example, an environmental benefit, you might have a message or you might be ideologically driven, you want to help the environment, but the angle you approach your business doesn't need necessarily to be head on. In our case, for example, we market our product uh, not as an environmental product. People don't know that actually German imaging technology saved over 1.3 million kilograms of CO2 over the last five years and does over 150,000 kilograms of waste deduction per year in the UAE. But our customers, being IT uh, uh, members and purchase managers of companies, don't necessarily want to know that aspect and are more focused on the benefit of a product. So that would be my message. Don't necessarily go head on with what you want to achieve, but think about the benefit you deliver to your customers and market yourself around that. Yeah, think about what they want, because they they're not you know, in the business of they're not a charity or they're not necessarily in the business of supporting the environment. Um, Customers will always buy when it is beneficial to them. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us at WAMDA. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much.